Hey, it's Judd with Lion Digital. In this video, I'm going to show you how to handle navigation in Craft CMS. So, how do you manage navigation in Craft CMS? So, there's a few things to consider. First thing is what kind of navigation do you have? Most sites have some sort of primary nav. Often, you have navigation in the footer. And then on sub pages or internal pages, a lot of times you'll have kind of some sub nav. So, there can be you, know, you need to think about what different types of navigation do you have on the site and then how often does it change the tendency is to probably overestimate how often it changes and make everything editable you know pros and cons of how much should be editable and how how much shouldn't be but how often it changes you definitely got to think about that and who's changing it how much do you trust the editor to make uh, changes to the site that could potentially affect all visitors are you working with someone technical? Are you working with a marketing agency? Is it an in-house team? What kind of training do they have? So you need to factor that in as well. So there's a number of different approaches. There's three primary approaches. You can hard code the nav and just forget about it. Just code it into the template and don't look back. You can use native functionality, meaning you can use the global system. You can use structures, you can combine them, kind of mix and match and use the built-in fields. And then you can also use third-party plugins that are built for the specific purpose of handling navigation. There's pros and cons to all, we'll go through each one. So hard-coded, the advantages are you kind of set it and forget it. This is a good option for when navigation changes are rare. Another advantage to this approach is you have to really think about what you're doing to the navigation before you make a change. So that kind of built-in review process can actually be a plus in many cases. The downside is obviously you need a developer to handle this. This isn't something you can empower your users to do. It's something that someone's going to need to change the actual template. On to the native approach, you can use globals or structure. The advantage here is that there's no external dependencies. You're using stuff that's built in and native to code. You're leveraging what you already know about the craft platform in terms of you know fields, field types, uh, templating syntax. The downside is sometimes it's not the most intuitive route for users, um, depending on how you set it up. And the other thing is, is you're pushing, developer needs to make decisions on what to name the nav, where to put it, how it's going to work, how much of it's editable, how much isn't, so having to think through all those things. One thing to make note of is that Craft does provide a utility uh, kind of helper syntax called nav. Instead of your typical for loop, you use this navigation tag and it handles uh, recursion. Basically loop through and create sub lists and list items that are formatted. Let's have a look at using built-in functionality to create navigation. In this case, we're using globals. So just like you would expect, go to globals. What I've done here is I've set up a global set called main nav. I've created a matrix field, which has a couple fields, has a label, URL, a little description. You can use relationship fields, so entry, category, asset, you can mix and match fields as you see fit. Matrix fields lend themselves really well to this type of thing, so you can drag and drop and reorder, and then you can also use the blocks within Matrix to have different link or navigation types. And then in your template, you just you know, loop through them, output them, position things however you would expect. So that's using globals. You can take a peek as well at utilizing structure. So structure gives you some nice if you use them for your site in general, you can use tags to just generate navigation automatically. But if you want to set up, and then as you're editing, as the users edit pages and move pages around, the navigation just automatically updates. So that's that's one approach. That's, that's more of a hard-coded approach. What I'm referencing here is using a structure, a separate structure dedicated to creating navigation items. So you see here, we've got our nice tree with some sub pages. And then I've just assigned a couple basic fields. In this case, I just use the built-in title and add a nav URL. Obviously, you can add more fields as you see fit, but you've got your own kind of little dedicated structure that manages the navigation, and then you can output that in your template. So you can get pretty creative you know, with different sets of structures. The downside, as I mentioned before, is that this if you have other structures that control actual pages, sometimes this isn't the most intuitive thing. Users don't really think in terms of structures and sections and that type of thing. They're going to look for something called nav or navigation. So you will probably need a little bit of training to do this. So those are the two ways you can kind of handle navigation natively. In nav tag that lets you create these loops for navigation purposes. And then the key part of this and how this differs from your typical for loop is this if children. If there are child pages, and you can use this in structures as well as with categories. If it does find nesting, what it will do is use this to call itself. So it's kind of 
probably done this using a macro before, but this is a nice kind of built-in way where I can handle that sort of thing for you. So what about using plugins for navigation? The pros of using third-party plugin is that it's purpose-built. It's made specifically to handle navigation. Another advantage is it's already done for you. Somebody else made all the decisions, wrote the code, created some syntax for you to pull into your templates. So that's always nice. The downsides, you're obviously depending on some third-party code. So you're hoping it stays updated and then it stays compatible with you know, upcoming versions of Craft. The other thing you need to consider is that it may have a commercial license. So you may need to pay and have a renewal fee. The ones I'm going to show you are very inexpensive, but you still need to factor that in depending on the project. So there's a handful of plugins. There's probably more. These are the ones that I'm familiar with and then was able to pull up in the plugin store. We've got Navigation, Navigate, Sprout Active, Craft Navigation, and Navi are the ones I'm going to take a look at. Navigation by Verb. $19 a license, $5 for an annual renewal. So when you install this plugin, you're going to get a navigation menu off to the left. Then you can create a different navigation set. In this case, I've done a States of Australia. And these are all manual links. Over here along the right hand side, you can add categories, entries, assets, or custom URLs. There's a few you know, subsettings for each one of those. We've got some settings on this navigation set itself in terms of fields you can assign, permissions, who can edit this, how many levels of nesting. This is all drag and drop where you can you know, nest, rearrange and then you get a number of methods to output this in your twig template. So here I'm using the render, this is the most common one, and then you can decorate your markup with classes, um, data attributes, that sort of thing. You can also query this stuff directly. It's got a, a couple other niceties in terms of, uh, I think there's one for breadcrumbs and a couple other things. So this is a really nice plugin. I've used this on dozens of sites and can recommend it. Verb makes really good stuff. The documentation's outstanding. It's gonna be supported for a long time. So can't go wrong with the navigation plugin from Verb. Navigate by Studio Espresso. $19 license, $10 annual renewal. So I've got this list of coffee drinks here. And then under cappuccino, there's also another kind of sub list item here on how to make cappuccino. So if we look at the navigate plugin, I've got this installed. Here's the UI, you get ability to create a navigation and then here we go down here it's somewhat similar to the navigation plugin from verb and then you can add entries URLs assets categories and one thing that this has that's kind of nice is you can do headings so when you have navigation like in a footer that may be in different columns and you've got a heading at the top or within a mega menu or you know could be a sidebar nav where you want to put a heading this allows you to manage that within the plugin so that's kind of cool drag and drop again you can set uh, limits on the levels of nesting and then in a template very similar get this render method you can add wrapper classes you can add a, a class to your unordered list list items and the links within so pretty straightforward solid plugin navigate by studio espresso sprout active by barrel strength design this one is free sprout active by barrel strength design so this isn't necessarily a navigation plugin. This is more of a utility in Twig that allows you to determine what page you're on. And that's very helpful for coding navigation so that you can highlight active nav items. You can do a little bit of kind of if then logic or you can do kind of check and, and see where you are. So it gives you a number of little uh, functions that you can check against. The syntax is, is more concise than using some of the craft, uh, the request methods when you're checking against you know, URLs and segments and whatnot. So in this example, I'm using the, the default of active. What I'm checking against is, is the slug sprout active? And if it is, it will return a class of active. You can control what the class name is. You can pass it different parameters in terms of what slug you're on. So in this case, the slug is sprout active. So this gets output as active. Navi by Dutch Hike, $15 license, $5 annual renewal. One thing, I did get some deprecation errors there, so it's something to be aware of. I'm not sure, it looks like it may need an update. So here's an example. I've got some famous Dutch artists here. We've got images and links and the name of the artist. Here's how the user interface looks. And this one's kind of cool in that it uses the same interface that entries and categories and uh, field types and everything use. So it's a little bit different take on creating an interface. I kind of like it and you can assign different fields here works kind of as you would expect um, one downside 
here is that there's some deprecated code here, so I'm not sure how up-to-date it is. Um, it is a commercial plugin, so there's probably some folks using it, and hopefully it gets updated, but it's worth, it's worth a look um, if you prefer this interface. Craft Navigation by Fatfish. This one's a free plugin. I was not able to get this working. I got it installed, and when I was trying to save things, I was getting 500 errors. I didn't mess around to try and figure out what was going on. So there you have it. Three different ways of handling navigation in Craft CMS. You've got hard-coded, you've got using native functionality like globals and structures, and you've got third-party plugins. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, suggestions, want to heckle me. Let me know. Thanks.